Hi friends, welcome back to another video. If you're a returning subscriber, then welcome back. I'm so happy to have you here. If you're a new viewer, then welcome to my channel. I'm really excited to have you here as well. So for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Jessica Espinoza and I'm a mind, body, soul health coach and a safe skincare consultant. You'll see a wide variety of videos on a really wide variety of topics on my channel. So if you feel like exploring, there's a lot here to look through. So today I am going to be talking about dry cracked hands and some of my remedies for preventing dry cracked hands. Now I know not everybody deals with this problem. I deal with it really, really bad. Uh, probably some of the worst of people that I know. So as soon as winter hits, it's almost like it happens overnight. So we go from the fall weather straight into winter and it's like overnight my skin totally changes. And this happens every year without fail. So what happens for me is I get really, really dry skin on my hands and then a lot of times it'll get so bad that I'll start getting cracks on my knuckles that will bleed. Then I also get little tiny like hairline cracks in the skin around my knuckles on my fingers too and even sometimes up my fingers as well from the dry skin and it seems like nothing that i do um totally prevents it but over the years i have been able to figure out what at least gives me relief and helps soothe it some so it's not as bad as it used to be it used to be really bad before i was really focusing on nutrition and hydration and safer products um, it would be pretty terrible and I would use some pretty nasty products on my hands But I was really searching for something that would give me relief because if you've ever dealt with something like that You know how uncomfortable and painful it can be to have your knuckles and your hands cracking and bleeding during the winter So totally not fun. So today I wanted to share a little bit about things that you can do if this is a problem that you deal with as well so the first suggestion that I have is going to be hydration. So number one, hydration. Are you staying hydrated? Are you getting enough fluids in throughout the day? This is a huge one because the majority of people walk around being in a state of hydration, either severe or very minor, almost all the time because we really, um, a lot of us just forget to drink enough and we're also maybe not eating enough water rich foods in our everyday diet. So we're missing a lot of hydration that we can get from our food as well. So really pay attention to what you're drinking. So you want to uh, try to avoid um, a lot of sugary drinks, a lot of highly caffeinated drinks um, in excess, especially the sugar that can be problematic for a lot of other reasons, but the caffeine can also be um, very dehydrating as well. So that doesn't mean you have to give up caffeine completely, but just be mindful of how much caffeine you're taking in every day and making sure that you're drinking enough other non-caffeinated fluids or eating enough um, high water vegetables and fruits and stuff like that to help replace any of the hydration that you're losing from the caffeine. So hydration is a huge thing. So I recommend water, of course, but a lot of people, including myself, not really a huge fan of water. It's hard for me to just sit down and drink regular old water. So I have to add some lemon juice or some lime juice or even a little splash of fruit juice at times. I also really prefer herbal tea. So my drink of choice is herbal tea, either hot during the winter or cool or cold during the summer. And I even drink iced herbal tea during the winter too, depending on the weather. Because here in Colorado, it can be freezing cold or it can be up in the 60s and even 70s in the middle of the winter. So who really knows? But herbal tea is my go-to um, source for hydration and then followed by vegetables and fruits. So just really pay attention to what you're drinking every day and also what you're eating. Try to up the amount of fruits and veggies that you're eating because you will get hydration from that. And then my last tip as far as the hydration goes is soup. If you're a fan of soup or broth or anything like that, that really counts towards your hydration. And soup is wonderful because it's kind of like the best of all the worlds because you're getting the hydration from the broth, but you're also getting a lot of vegetables in there depending on what type of soup you're eating. And soups are a great way to pack in a lot of nutrition into one dish that you may not want to eat 
all by itself. So definitely check out soups. I have a ton of soup recipes. I have herbal tea recipes and I even have some infused water recipes on my site. So I'm going to put the links to all of the recipes and any of the products I talk about in this video down in the video description below. And there may actually be some up here in the corner as well, linking to specific things that I'm talking about. So make sure you check those out if that's of interest. So number two, going along with hydration is going to be nutrition. So what are you eating and are you getting enough healthy fats? Healthy fats are really critical for our skin health. They're critical for our overall health, but skin health uh, really is impacted by the amount of fat that we're eating and if it's the good healthy fats. So things like coconut oil, avocados, butter, ghee, all of those beautiful fats that are good for us inside and out. So really take a look at the types of fat you're eating and how much you're eating throughout the day. It could be that you're just not getting enough fat into your diet and making a simple adjustment by using a little bit more, more oil in your cooking or adding a little bit of butter or ghee to your vegetables before you eat it. Maybe that can make all the difference for you. So definitely look into that. Number three. So following the nutrition standpoint or tip is digestion. So we can eat all of the healthy fats in the entire world. We can eat the healthiest foods in the entire world. But if we are not digesting our foods properly, then we're really not getting the benefits from it. So paying attention to your digestion is going to be huge because if you're not digesting things and getting your macro and uh, micronutrients into your body to where it needs to go, then your skin really can suffer. I mean, other areas of your health are going to suffer as well, but skin can be really noticeable with digestion. So pay attention to your digestion. Are you having any gas or um, upset stomach or bloating or heartburn or anything like that when after you're eating? Uh, you might consider adding in some digestive support. So a couple of my favorite forms of digestive support just to help the whole digestive system um, in its entirety are going to be first hydrochloric acid supplements. This is something that I take every single meal. I take one capsule and it really helps and I can notice a difference when I go off of it for a period of time with how I feel digestive wise versus when I'm um, consuming them regularly. So check out hydrochloric acid supplements. There's a bunch of different brands out there. Um, a word for those who do not eat pork like myself, some of the ingredients in hydrochloric acid supplements um, the pepsin and the pancreatin that are sometimes showing up in hydrochloric acid suppl supplements and your digestive enzyme supplements. In most cases, those are going to be derived from a pork product. So definitely call your manufacturers and find out where those are coming from, where they're being derived from, and look for um, ones that are either, either coming from beef or lamb, which is very hard to find. I actually to date have not found a source for that. So I use one, um, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it doesn't have either one of those ingredients in there. So it is completely uh, vegan and free from pork. So I will put a link down there. I'm so sorry, I can't remember the name of the supplement, but I'll put a link in the video description below. But there are tons of other brands out there. If that is not of a concern for you, um, then there are tons of brands to choose from. So you might just get a small bottle of each one, try them out um, and see really what works well for you. Then going along with the hydrochloric acid supplements would be digestive enzymes. These can be another great way to help boost and support our digestive system. Again, tons and tons of brands out there to choose from. I will link down in the video description below a couple that I personally like and ones that are also pork free for those of you that are concerned about that as well. Um, in addition to that, bitters. Bitters are really, really wonderful for supporting digestion. They really just help get all of the gastric juices flowing. And I have a recipe on my website for homemade bitters for those of you who are a DIYer. But there are, again, tons of brands of bitters out there that you can buy um, that are going to be herbal based. You can get them flavored and unflavored and different herbs and all of that stuff. So they're really a great tool to keep in your digestive toolkit. Um, and one that I notice a big benefit when I can stay consistent with my bitter intake and really supporting my digestion with the hydrochloric acid and some digestive enzymes, I notice a big difference in how, how I'm feeling. And a lot of people are also reporting that as well to me when I talk to them about digestion and the basics of digestion. So definitely check out bitters and I will throw uh, links down in the bottom below, including the recipe to make your own because it's really, really simple. And then 
Um, lastly is going to be probiotics. So probiotics are really important. Um, there's again, tons of different brands of probiotics out there. And this is another area where you're really going to have to experiment and see what works for you. Uh, what like one probiotic that works really great for myself and for my family, friends and clients is Megaspore Biotic, which you can, um, find through healthcare practitioners. You can actually also find it through my shop site as well. Um, that is one that works really well for me. And I notice when I stop taking it, I notice a difference. I've tried a lot of probiotics. I won't say I've tried every single brand out there because there are so many, but this is one that really makes a difference for me. And I've had so many clients and friends report the same thing. So it's a really powerful probiotic. Um, another one that used to work really well for me, um, and it still does because I have the old formula, is the Prescript Assist. Now that's a soil-based probiotic. Now, they recently have changed their formulation. If I understand everything correctly, they transfer to a different facility that is producing it and their formulation changed. And so I was lucky I stocked up on the old formula before I even knew any of this was going to happen. So I still have enough to tide me over. But when I get done with that bottle, I'm not really sure what I'm going to replace it with. So I've heard some people say that the new formulation just does not work as well um, and there's a lot of concerns about that. So if you're able to get your hands on any of the old formulation, then do it. But with the new one, you could totally experiment and see if it works. Probiotics and all of the stuff that I'm talking about really comes down to experimentation and seeing what works for you because we're each so unique in what our bodies need and what helps support them in the best way that they need as well. So definitely check those out. Um, I had to make myself some notes so I don't forget everything. So we've talked about hydration, nutrition, and digestion. So those are the first places that I would start um, if you're having skin problems. And then moving on, we want to really look at what type of soap you're using. So a lot of soaps can be really um, harm, not harmful, or hard on the hands. Well, some of them can be harmful too, depending on the ingredients in there. But a lot of them can be really, really hard on the skin on our hands. And if we're washing our hands a lot, if you're like me and you're in the kitchen a lot, doing a lot of cooking and prepping and stuff like that, I feel like I'm constantly washing my hands. And that exacerbates the super dry skin and the cracks that I get as well. So I have to be really mindful of how much I'm washing my hands because I tend to get a little bit OCD about hand washing sometimes. And I also need to make sure that I'm using a safer soap. So definitely look at the soap that you're using and see if possibly that is contributing to your dry cracked hands. What I would recommend doing is going to the Environmental Working Group's Skin Deep database. So that's the ewg.org slash skin deep. Throw a link down in the video description below. That is my number one source for information about safe skincare products because it is such a massive database of different brands and individual ingredients. And they go through and they break down all of the concerns, whether it be uh, cancer concerns, um, allergies and immunotoxicity, reproductive um, and endocrine system disrupting concerns, all of that is broken down and they break it down by brand, by product, and also by ingredient. So you really can dive deep in there. But I would go to the EWG website, the Skin Deep database, and I would just look up the soap that you're using and check the ingredients in there and see if there are potentially some harmful ingredients and then also some really harsh surfactants that could be contributing to the dry skin. Um, and that's a really great place to start when you are thinking about switching out to safer skincare products. Ideally, you wanna look for products that score a three or under on the Skin Deep database. That is kind of like the sweet zone. The lower you can get, the better. Um, but really, I try to stay at three or under. And so um, that is a definitely a huge place to look when it comes to dry, uh, cracked hands. And even dry skin overall, what are you using for a body wash? So definitely check that out. The last thing is doing some focused hand treatment. So this is something that I have to really keep up on during um, this cold winter season. And so I have to make sure that I am you know, using lotion at night or even doing more intensive um, therapies at night. So I'm going to share a few products that work really well for me. And um, again, you're going to have to experiment, but I would recommend checking out products that you're um, considering using or maybe products that you're currently using on that Skin Deep database and seeing where they're scoring so that you are not 
um, adding to the toxic load in your body by using products that have harmful chemicals in them. So the first product that I am going to share um, is the Tropical Traditions Moisturizing Cream. So this is a coconut oil based cream. It's really thick. You can see, I don't know if you can see how thick that is, but I just scoop a little bit out with clean hands and I massage it into my hands at night before I go to bed. It is because it's an oil based, coconut oil based product. It does take a little bit to soak in. So I try to do it, you know, like a good five or 10 minutes before I'm going to bed. So that has time to soak in before I'm actually laying down on my sheets. But this works really, really great for my skin, um, especially here in Colorado. So this is definitely one to check out. Very clean ingredients, nothing harmful or toxic in there. So you're not adding to that uh, chemical burden in your body. The next two products I'm gonna show you are both from Beauty Counter. And the first one is the Cleansing Balm. So this is really like a crazy multi-purpose product that they sell and I love it. It's made with all sorts of skin healthy oils. Again, no um, toxic chemicals in here, no um, parabens or anything like that that's gonna contribute to endocrine system disrupting or cancer and all of that fun stuff. Um, but the cleansing balm, so it was actually originally kind of designed, that's what it looks like. It is really, it's a firm oil. Um, it was designed originally for kind of a makeup remover, eye makeup remover and an oil cleanser, which is how a lot of people use it. Um, it can also be used as an overnight mask, which is the main reason um, that I got it was for an overnight mask. But then one of my dear friends um, introduced me to using it on dry cracked hands. So her daughter also suffers from the same issue I do, really dry cracked hands and they'll start bleeding and get rashy and icky. And so she was using the cleansing balm and was showing before and afters and it's pretty amazing. So the cleansing balm is a great thing for dry cracked hands. This is one of my go-tos now. And what I do, um, I don't use this every single night. So I will use some sort of lotion, typically this moisturizing cream um, every night so that I'm putting something on before I go to bed. And then a few times a week, I do kind of a more like a deeper hydration treatment. So I will either use the beauty counter cleansing balm for that or this is the uh, Beauty Counter Baby, this is the Daily Protective Balm. So this, designed for babies, but adults can use it too. It's a really, really thick, um, almost like a petroleum jelly, you know, from the old, old days, which please don't use petroleum jelly, so bad for your skin and your body. But this is um, a really safe, clean replacement for that. And so this, really thick, it's gonna put um, a kind of a thick, waxy layer on your skin. But I put this on maybe once a week and I put it on nice and thick and I try to massage it in as much as I can. But to be honest, it's not going to massage in um, all the way. So I take old socks. I have some really old soft socks that I don't wear anymore that are, you know, still pretty big and let my hands kind of move around so they're not like all crunched up like this at night. Then I put the socks over it and then I sleep with it overnight. Um, and that really helps as well. So that is the how many tips was that i think that was five so we talked about hydration first then we talked about nutrition digestion looking at the soaps and even the body washes that you're using to see if that could be contributing to the dry cracked skin and then lastly the hand treatments that are working for me right now i'm always experimenting with new things so if i have some new discoveries for products that work really well for my poor hands i will probably shoot a new video about that just to keep you guys up to date because i love trying out new products and really seeing what works for me especially when they my hands start hurting and i need some relief so i hope that has been helpful for you guys if you have any questions about anything that i covered in here don't hesitate to let me know you can email me you can leave a comment down below you can find me on social media um, i would love to help you out in any way that i can there will also be links to everything down in the video description below. And if you found, sorry, there was a piece of fuzz floating and it was annoying me. <laughs> so that's why I did that. <laughs> um, I realized that you guys did not see the piece of fuzz floating down. Um, anyways, so if you found this video helpful or inspiring or anything, I would love it if you'd give me a thumbs up and even subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed. Uh, every time you guys give me a thumbs up and also when you give thumbs up and subscribe to other channels as well. It helps all of us further our mission um, and it helps me further the mission of real food and healthy living and natural living and safe skincare and all of those things that I am interested in. So I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will be back again with a new video in the very near future. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.